In this video, we're going to look at how to name a composition of transformations as a single transformation. Um, also, really just looking at how can we um, identify the transformation that was used on a graph. So a couple of things to keep in mind is the orientation. That's really going to help us when we're looking at these, because sometimes you can't really decide if it's a reflection or a rotation. So if you remember um, what we know, same orientation. is going to be any time that you have translations or rotations, which really also means point reflections because point reflections are rotations of 180 degrees. So because those are rotations of 180 degrees. So in that case, the orientation stays the same or the order of the letters. So those are all direct isometries. And then on the flip side, we have line reflections. Oops, let me write um, opposite orientation here. So we have opposite orientation, which is going to be the only time you have that is under a line reflection. So meaning the order of the letters flip. So what we're going to do when we're trying to identify, if we look at this first example here, I'm trying to identify how did I get um, from the original here. So what is the composition? So how did I go from 1 to 2 and then to 3? So how did I get from JU to the primes to the double primes? So the first step here, if I'm looking at from 1 to 2, would be let's look at the orientation. Sometimes you can't tell, is it a reflection or is it a rotation in this case? It doesn't look like a translation um, because it didn't just slide to get from one to the other. So if I go ahead and I draw on my arrow, so I'm just going to go JAU, which means down here I have to go JAU. If you look at the direction here, those stay in the same direction. So we had the same orientation which is telling me that this is either a translation or a rotation or a point reflection, but I'm just going to go with um, thinking of a point reflection as the rotation of 180. So in this case, I look at, okay, well, um, it looks like it turned, doesn't look like it just slid, so that tells me I'm going to be using a rotation. And then we have to find the center of rotation. So the center is, remember, equidistant from each of the points. So if I look at just u and u prime right now, see how equidistant is going to be at the origin. That's the same distance away. If I count a out, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. See how it's that same distance? So I kind of just eyeballed that. Um, the other option is to actually construct the perpendicular bisectors between any pre-image and image point, and then where they cross is going to be the center. So I'm seeing that the center is there, and then I see that this moved two quadrants. So two quadrants on a graph means 180 degrees as my rotation. I could also just connect from U to the center to U prime and see that angle of rotation was 180 degrees. So that means my first step here was a rotation of 180 degrees around 0, 0. And when we talk about rotations, normally we have to talk about them um, with respect to which direction you're going. So you normally have to say the degree, the center, and the direction. In this case, I don't care about the direction. Um, because 180, either way, is going to end up in the same spot. So that's the first step. And then the second one here is how did I go from 2 to 3? So when I look at 2 to 3, so I have my arrows again from the original labeling. Then I go JAU in the second. See how the orientation is changing? They're going in opposite order. So that means now I have opposite orientation. So that tells me that this has to be a line reflection that occurred. So now it's just a matter of figuring out, okay, well, what did it reflect over? What's the perpendicular bisector between the pre-image and image points? So if you look at that, the perpendicular bisector would be the y-axis. Same thing with j prime and j double prime. So this is going to be a reflection 
over the y-axis. So then from there, I just have to write this as a composition. So the composition, remember when we go to write this, this is what comes second, and then you write what comes first, second, so you do it backwards. So this is the first thing we did. So the first thing we did was a rotation of 180. So that's going to be, our notation for that is going to be a capital R. The center was 0, 0, so it's going to be 0, 0 is first, comma, the degrees, so 180. So we do that first, followed by a reflection, so lowercase r, for reflection over the y-axis. So there's my composition. So that's how I would write that. You wouldn't really put the brackets under there. I'm just doing it so you could see it. And then the next part here, the follow-up, is what single transformation is going to map one onto the other. So how could I have just gone from one to three? So again, compare the orientation. So if I look at my arrows now, I can see that these arrows are going in the opposite direction. So that tells me a line reflection would map one onto the other. And if I actually, this picture is getting really crowded, but if I actually look, um, the perpendicular bisector is going to be the x-axis. So to kind of just shorten that up, um, it had opposite orientation, so that means line reflection, and then I look for the perpendicular bisector, so we would do a reflection over the x-axis for this one. So you could just see, if you imagine perpendicular bisector between any of these points, it would be the x-axis. So you can write it like that, or reflection with a lowercase r, x-axis as the subscript. For number two, we're going to start by just graphing the triangle, and then we're going to just go through and kind of follow these different steps here. So let's start by plotting the triangle here. So we have um, A is negative 1, 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. B is 3, 7. And then 5, 1 for C. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 1. So there's my triangle. Then it says that we're going to, so that's part A. It says to graph and state the coordinates of triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, which is the image under this composition. So that means after doing both of these things, we're going to then call that final result A prime, B prime, C prime. So the first thing I'm going to do here is the reflection over the x-axis. And I'm actually going to change this. Let's just state, um, graph and state the coordinates. Let's call it the double prime because I'm, I want to label my reflection over the x-axis as a prime, b prime, c prime. Otherwise, if I don't change that, then I could pick another set of letters to name the reflection. Um, but just for the sake of this problem, let's just make it a little bit easier and make those double prime. So I'm going to do a reflection over the x-axis. So that means here's my x, here's my y. So I'm going to take each point and travel over the x-axis the same distance. So I'm going to count its 1, 2, 3, 4 units. So travel 1, 2, 3, 4. B is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Again, we're making sure that we're counting perpendicular to the line of reflection. So C is one unit, so go one more unit. There's C prime. So that's my in-between. And then the last thing I'm going to do here is a rotation. So this is going to be my second piece, and we're going to use um, the primes. So that means I'm going to reflect over the x-axis, and I'm going to take so I'm going to take my result from reflecting over the x-axis, and it's going to rotate 90 degrees around the origin, so around point O is what they're calling it, but it's going to be um, 0, 0. So I'm starting here as my center, and remember whenever it's 90, that means you're going one quadrant. Since it's positive, that tells me I'm going one quadrant counterclockwise, since it's a positive angle. And we're going to flip the movement, because we have to have those negative reciprocal slopes um, for our angle, since we're moving 90 degrees. So I'm going to start, and I'm going to use the prime. So I'm starting here, and to count to um, 
A, I have to go 1 and then 1, 2, 3, 4. So the movement was 1, 4, so that means I have to flip that to 4, 1. Now, since I'm going 90 degrees counterclockwise, A double prime will end up over here. B and C are going to move one quadrant counterclockwise, which means they're going to end up up top here. So from here, I went 1, 4, so I'm going to switch that to 4, 1. So my horizontal is 4, and my vertical movement is 1. That's going to be my double prime. So again, if you connect that, you see the right angle, you see that the slopes are flipped and negated, so that means that I've done it correctly. Then to get to B, I had to go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it was 3, 7, so that means if I flip it, 7, 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3. And then for C, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 1. So we're going to flip that to 1, 5. So over 1, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And again, remember, I'm flipping those movements because of the fact that we are um, dealing with right angle. So we need negative reciprocal slopes. And these are really kind of my slopes. Um, I'm just counting horizontally then vertically. So from here, I've done the um, transformation or the composition. So let me go ahead and state my coordinates. I'm going to state my double primes because that's the result after the um, composition. So A is 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1. B prime is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 3. And then C double prime is over 1, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 1, comma 5. So there's the first part. Um, then the second part here says state the single transformation. So the first part of the question is really just a review. The last part here is um, coming up with a single transformation. So now what I'm really doing is I'm looking at the pink and the green triangles. I'm not looking at the purple because I'm looking at how could I have just gone from the original to the final image. So if we imagine drawing on our arrows, so let me draw on the arrows of the green triangle. So A, B, C. And then if I do that for the pink, it's going to be A, B, C. So if you imagine your direction, so here's the green versus the pink, they're going in opposite direction. So that tells me opposite orientation. So that means I know that there has to be a reflection. So now it's a matter of figuring out, well, where is the line of reflection? So the line of reflection has to be the perpendicular bisector between any set of pre-image and image points. So if you just imagine looking at um, B to B double prime, imagine counting or finding the perpendicular bisector. You could use your compass to do this, do the perpendicular bisector construction. You could use the method used in Unit 1, where you find the midpoint, and then you flip and negate the slope. Um, so that would also work. So if I look at going from B to B double prime, I had to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, then over 1, 2, 3, 4. So that means the midpoint is going to be down 2 over 2. So there's the middle. So my perpendicular bisector has to go through that. And I'm not going to kind of show all the work, but just talking through it. So I get the midpoint, and then from there, I know that the slope was down Four over 4, which really means, um, so the slope of B, B double prime, was down 4, right 4, which really means negative 1. So that tells me the perpendicular slope has to be 1. So that means I'm going up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, and then backtracking until you get your y-intercept. So you're seeing that it's going through the origin, and you've seen this picture before as a well-known um, line of reflection that we use when it goes from corner to corner through the origin, this is the line y equals x. It has a slope of 1, a y-intercept is 0, so if you were to write that equation, it's y equals x. So using that. Um, so that's one way, that's like the actual, that way will always work to find the line of reflection. So to state the single transformation, it's a reflection 
Okay, so I have my page back, so it's a reflection over y equals x. So that's the single transformation. Um, so I use the perpendicular bisector again. I didn't really show all the work. I kind of talked through it. But just so you know, you might have recognized this um, before I actually did all of that perpendicular bisector stuff, um, meaning what you might have thought was if we compare the original coordinates, so if I compare, let me just move this here, if I compare these coordinates here, I'm really struggling here with this computer today, um, these coordinates to my primes, if you compare those, all that really happened was we just switched x and y. So the rule whenever x and y get switched, that just means it's a reflection over y equals x. So I could have skipped the whole perpendicular bisector thing and just said, oh, well, I recognize that the coordinates just switched order. So that means it's a reflection over the line y equals x. However, you might not recognize that pattern or that pattern might not always work, meaning you might not get something that works. So you should know the process of being able to find the line of reflection. Um, so go ahead and try the check your understanding problems and we will talk about those in class tomorrow.